Thank you for a nice introduction. Sir, um, uh, we, we also have Dr. Ruchi Sharma, director of our school. Uh, Ma'am, would you like to welcome him? Yes, sir. Um, uh, first and foremost, sir, we are very thankful to you that uh, from your busy schedule, you have taken time out to talk to our students. And uh, when we were thinking about the topic, uh, so critical thinking, many a times some people have this misconception of that to criticize. Uh, people uh, think about that, that if we are doing critical thinking, then we are criticizing people, which is not the case. And uh, it, critical thinking, as today we will be going to learn, uh, it is not only helpful in uh, the professional area for our students, but also in personal life, it is very helpful. So again, sir, uh, I heartily welcome you uh, on behalf of Jagran Lake City University uh, on this online session. And thank you very much for giving your time to us. Please, sir, carry out the, with the session. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sharma. It's nice. <laughs> you, okay. Now, you know, I have uh, slightly uh, changed my title. Uh, I have combined both. With communication skills uh, and uh, developing critical thinking through visuals. Uh, because at the end of the day, as English is very important for us to communicate, uh, mostly in our uh, academic situation, as well as it is a job requirement for all, all of us. So developing a good communication skill is very important, along with critical thinking. So let us start the presentation before I go for the presentation. Okay. So this is the purpose of today's presentation. Uh, so I am. I can see you. Uh, your view also. So there is absolutely no problem if something goes wrong. Uh, be patient with me for a minute or two because uh, I am staying far away from you across the ocean, and uh, something may happen. Technology can sometimes trouble us. So be patient. I'll be logging in in another two or three minutes in case if I go away. Right now, the purpose of the today's presentation is to demonstrate uh, how communicative competency and critical thinking can be taught to students or learned by students using different visuals. So uh, mostly, this presentation is. Uh, a kind of combined presentation for uh, both uh, teachers as well as for students. So I have already told you what I am going to do in the presentation. Yeah, so first let us start the presentation with a kind of warmer activity. I'm going to show you three pictures or uh, cartoons to you. Just uh, look at that one by one. And I want you to tell me what comes to your mind immediately after seeing these pictures. Take a minute time. You can type out your answers, whatever uh, that comes to your mind. Is this picture uh, depicting the real situation, real educational scenario in our country? Or it is only overstating what is there? Or it is an understatement? If someone wants to speak over phone, it's all right. You can switch on the microphone talk and uh, then switch off.
So what do you find here? It's an inter interview, job interview scenario, isn't it? So people come out with a lot, you know, high percentage of marks. Other than that, what skills do they have in order to get employed? Yeah, it is depicting the real situation of the education system that generally persists in your country. Good. Sman Swadi. Yeah, it's a good response, yes. The picture, in my understanding, depicts lack of pragmatic knowledge and understanding despite overwhelming percentage. Good. Abhishek Singh, good. Yeah, the person has not developed soft skills. Okay. Yeah, these are um, all true to the situation. Now tell me, what do we do in order to mitigate the situation or improve the situation? How do students get to learn more skills and become better communicators? I think uh, initially I can go a bit slow, isn't it? We have 90 minutes time and uh, I want it to be so. Any suggestions to improve the situation? Don't tell me close down all the colleges and universities. Incorporate teaching soft skills along with hard skills. Good. Yeah, through reading books on communication, you can improve communication. Try it by inculcating practices that put them face to face with the real world. Simulation exercise are good way to do that. Excellent. That's what uh, needed. Abhishek Singh again. To become a better communicator, please have to follow effective listening. Very good. Yeah. The more you listen, the more you become efficient in your communication. So it's like input and output. The more you, more input you have in a language and it, the more experience you have in listening, the more you can talk. Right, let us move on to the next picture. I'll tell you why visuals are very important. So what do you think of this picture? So any problem in the society, unless it knocks at your door, you think that you are safe, isn't it? That kind of very callous attitude, selfish attitude, self-centered, very good. Yes, Man Swadi has said rightly, being self-centered, lack of team spirit, yes. That's very important in today's world, working as a team, collaborative, cooperative work, putting responsibility to others, yes. People are not bothered by something happening around them unless it is difficult affecting them, yeah, directly affecting them. Egocentric, yes, it is, even though it has... Uh, yeah, people are egocentric and uh, Lorna. Lack of understanding that problems facing one group of people can affect others and leaving those who struggle on their own until such time as it affects them. Very good. It's a beautiful. Yeah. I don't think I need to teach critical thinking to you people because you are already good in that. Okay, let us have a look at the next picture. Can you connect it with the relevance recent happening in the, in the country? Satish Acharya is a friend of mine. He is, uh, you know, every day he 
makes few cartoons. Maybe you have come across his cartoons. Gandhi's statue is being washed ahead of Gandhi Jayanti. So how do you do that? The tears of women from our country. I remember rightly if uh, Gandhi once said that uh, the real freedom comes to India when a uh, young beautiful girl with a lot of jewelry on her, if she can walk without any disturbance in the middle of the night in any part of the country, that's the day we get real freedom. Leave alone walking at night. Can you walk during daytime? Yeah, that Ashita Rathod, the painful, it's a pitiful state of women in the country questioning the real meaning of independence. Yeah, so whether Gandhi is relevant, whether our values are relevant today. Now, why I displayed this picture, these pictures is to just to kind of uh, kindle your thought process in understanding the situation we are in. So this is something very, very important. So education is uh, nothing but, uh, you know, trying to create a kind of awareness about ourselves and our, our surroundings. So if our surroundings are not okay, we are not okay. That is a kind of uh, relations relationship we have with our surroundings. Okay, now I am into the real uh, the presentation proper. What is communicative competence? Can anyone tell me what is communicative competence? Being comfortable in all four language skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. In addition to that, you should be able to use the words and rules, grammatical rules, vocabulary, and use the correct word at the correct uh, context. And there should be connection between the words you use and clarity of the thoughts expressed by you and use of communication strategies. Communication strategies include being polite or being impolite. Depends on what kind of situation you are. So, in society, both politeness and impoliteness are very important in communication. So we all have a thinking that uh, po politeness is the only way of communicating. No, sometimes in your impolite talk can save you from difficulties, protect you. So therefore, uh, both are equally important in the society. And uh, the tone and the way, gestures we use, all these things are part of our communicative competence. How well we use all these four items mentioned here tells us how good we are in our communication. Be it Hindi or any, any other language, in mean, mother tongue or a foreign language, whatever language you are using, you should be competent in that. So what is a communicative classroom? A communicative classroom gives a kind of a learning environment where you get a um, lot of opportunities to develop your communication skills. So normally most of the teaching and learning that takes place in our universities, I saw on your paper, no talking to your neighbor. So always we want our students, our students also are comfortable in the setting and, uh, you know, not responding as required in the class. So most of us, we teachers are comfortable when our students are not asking questions or when students are very quiet and they are listening to us. So that cannot be considered a communicative classroom. Whereas it is a communicative classroom gives opportunities for students to express themselves without any anxiety and without any fear of being criticized. So what I feel is that as a language teacher, language classroom is uh, the only place where you can make mistakes. Outside you can't, you should avoid. 
So you should make as many mistakes as possible inside the classroom. No one should be criticizing you or making fun of you for your mistakes, especially the teacher can't do that. Now look at this um, slide. Why teach like this? Now most of our classrooms are designed like this, isn't it? What about your university? We have the same seating arrangement. Look at the left side. We have the same seating arrangement. Whereas a language classroom or any other classroom should be like this. The communication should take place in different uh, directions. So this is something very, very important if you want to develop communication skills and uh, you have very good knowledge base for students in a language or in any other subject for that matter. A classroom situation should be like this, which is depicted on the right hand side. So it's high time we think on these lines and uh, do something about it. Why a communicative classroom? So learning any language is to communicate with other people. So you don't simply learn a language uh, just for um, uh, the heck of doing that. Just for uh, you know communicating with people. So I speak four languages and when I meet people from that particular language and when I speak to them, they are very happy. So they tell me that you are a Tamilian, we are happy that you speak Telugu or you speak Malayalam. So this is how we communicate with people. If you use another person's language, they'll be very happy. You know, you can reach to their heart very quickly, very easily. So therefore, especially when you learn English, the classroom should provide opportunities to develop all the four language skills that are essential for communication. So you should have uh, not only communicative English speaking to people, but also you should develop very good uh, academic English. Academic English is very much important to learn the core subjects that we have registered for learning in the university, be it, be it engineering, philosophy, psychology, political science, whatever it is. So the language is the tool. So once you have the right tool, very effective tool, you can work very well with that. So English is uh, the tool for uh, learning. So therefore, for academic purpose also, it is important to learn the language in a proper way. Now look at this picture. Can you type out the words that come to your mind very quickly? And you look at the picture, what, you, what are the words that come to your mind? So nothing is coming to your mind. Branch, okay. Misconceptions. Now look at the picture, don't interpret the picture. I don't want interpret interpretation. I want, when you look at the picture, is it beautiful? Is it shocking? Something like that. Interference. Your immediate reaction on seeing this picture. Attack. Adorable. Funny. Right. So that kind of words I'm expecting. Right. Actually, all the words you typed are um, relevant. I'm trying to find out um, how well self-protection, funny. Okay. I think 37 people are there listening to me. I expect at least 60, uh, 74 words, two words each. That's all. Okay, let me move on to the next slide. 
and look at the words my students gave me. So the idea is that, you know, with a small picture, you can generate so much of vocabulary. So the idea is that when you see something, you should be able to generate words, ideas using that. That's how you develop a language. So developing words. The first and foremost thing in developing a language is learning the words. So every time you need not uh, refer to a dictionary or go to a book in order to learn words, you can generate things and generate a lot of words because day in and day out, we listen to many words. Only thing is we are not able to recapitulate or recollect them at the right moment. So this is one way of uh, developing our vocabulary bank and using them at the right time. So when we use this exercise, what, uh, what is the advantage? New words are added to the student's vocabulary. And uh, after adding the words, you should be able to, you know, if you know the new word, you should know the spelling, meaning of the word, and you should be able to use it in a sentence meaningful sentence in your communication. Therefore, if time permits, teachers, this is for the teachers, they can ask the students to uh, give the meaning of the words by giving a sentence, not directly giving the synonym, but uh, making them guess the meaning. For students, this is very important. Maintaining a, voc a vocabulary log is important. If you keep a small notebook and write down the words, then it will be easy to remember those words. And over a period of time, you will have number of words in your memory and in your notebook. So, you know, from the notes, it can go into your memory. Now, why critical thinking? Why should we have critical thinking? So developing the critical thinking capabilities of students is one of the primary aims of education. So make people think, ask questions. So basically critical thinking is asking questions, asking the kind of right question. So what is the advantage? So you get a chance to analyze material, formulate opinions about the things you learn and to express your opinions and not only you just express it, when you say that I like that picture, you should also be able to tell why you like that picture? So through evidence, not simply making a statement, but provide enough evidence for uh, your statements, whatever you say. And critical thinking abilities help students to become autonomous and independent thinkers. Identify the prejudices. So we all have prejudices. Like uh, when we meet somebody from another state, we are prejudiced. We listen to somebody else talking another language, we are prejudiced. So how you understand your prejudice? All are prejudiced. We will have, I have my own prejudices, you have your own prejudices. Therefore, these prejudices should be able to, we should be able to analyze and understand from, from various perspectives and asking appropriate questions and also evaluate differing viewpoints fairly. So I have one idea, you have another idea. We should be able to, um, understand and accept others ideas also it's not simply you know blaring out what we understand or what we think but accepting others ideas are also very important so critical thinking helps you to develop that kind of an attitude so why it is important to develop um, critical thinking because if you develop critical thinking you will become autonomous and independent thinkers your thinking will be autonomous. Your thinking will be independent. People cannot easily influence you in a bad way, in a negative way. So somebody influencing in a positive way is always good, but somebody brainwashing you is unacceptable. Therefore, if you are not um, good in critical thinking, people can easily brainwash you. People can easily influence you and make... Um, you accept their way of thinking. So there is a particular foundation called the Foundation for Critical Thinking. It says that uh, 
I read the quote, the cultivation of fair-minded critical societies through demonstrated tools of critical thinking represents our best hope for people across the world to work for the public interest rather than vested interest. So why people should develop critical thinking? Because people should work for the public interest, not for vested interest, their own selfishness. So in society, um, you know, in our country, millions and millions of people are living. If you are self-centered and you think about yourself only, then uh, the society will not hold for a long time. Each one is thinking of his or her own um, personal benefits. So therefore, we shouldn't have vested interests. Of course, as an individual person, we should have some selfishness. I don't say that you should be totally selfless, but we should have some interest in others also. And that's why the, one of the pictures, that word picture I showed you, where people don't show interest for others, they are thinking about themselves, okay? Now, it is uh, critical thinking also will help us to cultivate core intellectual virtues. These are uh, core intellectual values. One is humility. So you are a learned person, you are a professor, you are an IAS officer, you are an IPS officer. Are you humble? How many of our officers are humble? I'm asking my students, when you go and meet an official in the university or outside in the general public, how many officials are humble? How many of you of them offer a smile to you? How many of them receive you well? How many of them are ready to help you? How many of them expect you to fall at their feet? These kinds are very important. These kinds of things we have to understand. Perseverance, the ability to do hard work um, in spite of uh, not seeing the success easily. So you work, work, but you don't see success, but you keep on working. That is, that is perseverance. Then integrity, moral values. So having good value system and responsibility. So taking responsibility for whatever you are saying and whatever you are doing. These are the benefits of developing critical thinking. So if you want to be a good critical thinker, you need to have all these few virtues. At the same time, these virtues also will make you a great critical thinker. So your thinking will have um, effective results only when you have humility, perseverance, integrity, and responsibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing of real value comes easily. So if you want to be an intellectual, if you want to create an intellectual, and if you want to be active and uh, alive and uh, a student with determination, it is only through the educational process that uh, develops your critical thinking. Now, what is critical thinking? Now, in the beginning, your director uh, and uh, Dr. Anshiga mentioned about critical thinking. They gave a very short explanation about critical thinking. These are the real explanation about critical thinking. One is deep questioning. So Socratic notion of deep questioning. Now all over the world, people uh, think that Socrates is the only one who developed uh, thinking abilities and uh, questioning. Uh, he asked, he always asked the student, uh, his disciples to question him so that he can give them answers and uh, continue to discuss issues. But uh, we Indians have a very, very long history of um, thinkers, even before Socrates was born. But unfortunately, that is not, uh, we are not able to develop that into a kind of uh, modern knowledge today. So if, if we can do that, Socrates will be nothing in front of our um, philosophers who brought in a lot of thinking and, uh, you know, analytical um, power to our brain. So they were very, very great thinkers. There were a lot of thinkers, a lot of um, great philosophers in India, even before Socrates. And all our uh, classics are great examples of uh, critical thinking, asking questions. So it is important to read the classics and understand and analyze how they are questioning, how they are answering, even very difficult situations are discussed in um, our classics. Okay, then uh, another explanation is it is reasonable reflective thinking. 
like uh, Dr. Anshia said, it is thinking about thinking. So you have a thought in your mind, then you analyze whether your thought is correct or not. It is a kind of evaluate you thinking, analyzing, inferring, trying to bring inferences and interpretations. Also, Lippmann says it is healthy skepticism. Skepticism is being critical or being a little bit negative, but healthy skepticism is not negative. So you always uh, give a benefit of doubt to everything. It's not simply doubting, but also analyzing your doubts, then coming to a conclusion. Lewis and Smith calls it a higher order thinking. It's not ordinary thinking. It is a little bit higher level. I have many examples, and I shall demonstrate it later. And you will understand this better when I demonstrate it, when I finish the theory and go back to the practical part of it. So conscious use of learning strategies. This is also critical thinking is, uh, you know, conscious use of learning strategies. There are many learning strategies we use. So deductive method, interactive methods, all these things are strategies. This is also very important, you know, involving in task and increasing awareness of the context. So I showed the pictures, you know, that immediately gives you a context to think. And uh, when you think, you get more information about the co that particular context, be it the picture on Gandhi, about Gandhi, or the board, or even the interview scenario I showed. So that generates a lot of awareness about the context. Then goal-directed evaluation-oriented thinking strategy. So when we think there is a goal, so goal-directed, it is not um, wavered thinking. Uh, the thinking has a purpose. Bitmore says the ability to identify central issue, evaluate conflicting claims based on evidence on authority, and interpret whether conclusions are warranted or not accordingly. This is very, very important. So ability to identify the central issues, evaluate conflicting claims. For example, we are in a market uh, economy. Consumerism, and most of the people come out with a lot of claims about all the products. So whether their claims are uh, correct, whether we can trust them, trust a product, and whether we can go and buy that. This is uh, something practical, isn't it? And uh, evidence. So you must be able to ask for evidence, whether they, do we have the product evidence. Now they are trying to develop vaccine for COVID. but. Um, even though there are a lot of claims, people, uh, this, many scientists say it will not be effective. The time given for uh, developing a vaccine and testing it is not enough. Therefore, we cannot come to a conclusion whether the vaccine will be effective or not. So this is, again, critical thinking, interpreting and, uh, you know, to come out with a conclusion. Sometimes you have to just think and leave it. You need not come to conclusion every time. If it is warranted, if it is necessary, you come to conclusion. Otherwise, just move ahead. Then the third part. So I'm integrating three things here. I told you in the beginning, I'm integrating communication, critical thinking, and the effect of visuals in developing both critical thinking and our communicative capabilities. So visuals. So visuals are uh, all relevant materials like pictures, photographs, videos, and any other visual representation, it can be a painting, it can be a scenario, and you just move out of your home. India is a country with a lot of greeneries, a lot of visuals. You can learn a lot from the nature also. So you, if you have a very good keen observation ability, you can learn a lot, okay? Then visuals like cartoons, caricatures, and pictures are rich sources of information about issues of topical interest. Now, you know, uh, the issues related to women, this rape and, uh, you know, um, killing of women, annihilation of women in our country is a very serious problem. You can write hundreds and hundreds of pages, whereas the cartoonist has, uh, you know, given that uh, in a very, very nice way in two pictures, a face with tears falling down and these tears falling on Gandhi's head and a small caption, isn't it? So it is very rich in information, rich source of information about issues of topical interest. Now we are, uh, why there is no connection between what we learn and what is happening in the society? Because we have failed to integrate um, um, these two things, society and uh, learning. Whereas um, these kind of pictures when um, given to the students or when we look at it and discuss in a classroom, 
uh, it gives a lot of uh, it generates a lot of information and create a lot of interest in understanding that at the same time when we discuss it uh, becomes a kind of a effective communication um, it gives an effective communication platform for us to develop our communication the advantage of using visuals is that they can break the monotony of reading textbooks so if you read suddenly you see a picture which one will be more interesting reading or uh, it depends actually you cannot claim that some people are reading is very interesting looking at a picture it can break the monotony they can relate learning and real life as i have shown in the picture thereby learning will be becoming more engaging imaginative motivating for students so the picture of classroom i showed if you have a setup in which you can students can face each other sit in groups discuss the learning will be engaging it will um, inspire students it will create a lot of uh, it will ignite their Im imaginative capabilities and it will also motivate them to learn you won't feel tired after attending a lecture of one hour classroom with a discussion and things like that otherwise if the teacher talk for an hour it will be really really boring and uh, you will get out of the particular classroom tired and exhausted because you do nothing there but you sit and listen now in uh, english language theor theorists say that in a language classroom a teacher any teacher who teaches more than 20 percentage of the time if the class is for 100 minutes if the teacher talks more than 20 minutes in the class she cannot develop communication among students she is a very bad teacher or he is a very bad teacher he is not good for teaching language that is their assessment so 80 percentage of the time you should engage students the students should uh, get opportunity and students also should take opportunities and um, cater to the discussion in the classroom the great thing about using visuals is that you can find visuals everywhere and you can easily use them for learning as well as teaching any language why picture this is a theory called picture superiority effect now we are all visual learners generally so we look at things and we like to perceive things through our eyes sensory neurons are uh, dedicated for visual processing of information 75 percentage of our brain cells are dedicated for visual information and to process that so if you instead of saying the word tree if you draw a tree on the board and show them the students will be able to um look at the picture and capture the picture in their mind and that will be a greater understanding than learning the word about the picture the idea is that you know the visual effect is much higher than listening effect so why visuals are very effective because visuals cover a broad area it talks about population pollution love adventure war corruption nepotism you know what is it nepotism is favoring your own relatives in giving jobs or uh, giving educational facilities favoritism scandals personal and social life etc so all these things uh, evoke uh, readers uh, knowledge and interest these things are very important especially gossip isn't it we are very very much interested in uh, listening to gossip so and we are good at spreading gossips also so it's a fast time and none of my friends says that if you are a good gossiper you never get heart attack because you don't don't retain any gossips in your heart you spread it everywhere you are generous in that and your heart is safe i don't know how far it is scientifically true maybe they are easy to understand and their originality visuals i am not talking about gossips gossips are also easy to understand very quickly we capture everything very quickly isn't it okay freshness unusualness and spontaneity delight and refresh readers the pictures cartoons so they provide realistic truthful authentic and relevant information in a revealing manner look all the you think about all the pictures i showed you they are really truthful authentic and realistic isn't it it is portraying the real situation this giving relevant information revealing manner 
Now they don't write anything, they don't say, but everything is revealed, open for you to see it. Information is uh, both direct and indirect. So sometimes it is very ironical also. So they you know, present the information in a very, very ironic way. Some of the cartoons, which I am going to use for practical discussion, you will understand that. Now I'm coming to the practical part of it. Give me a second, let me have some water. Okay, what are the core critical thinking strategies? Now look at it and read it. These are the seven critical thinking strategies students have to develop. I'm not going to read them, just to read. Once you finish reading, put a message. Have you finished reading? So I, I should get at least three yes in the chat box. Okay. Thank you. So I'll move ahead. So these are the seven strategies as students, you have to develop, and we teachers also should develop before students develop this. Okay, now developing visual literacy, and I told you about uh, the effect of visuals for learning. Here it is slightly different, actually. We are a visually illiterate society. Illiterate means uneducated society. Our world is changing fast, faster than we can keep up with our conventional modes of thinking and communicating. Here, um, nowadays, most of the teachers uh, complain that we are not able to capture the attentions of students. So the span of attention of a student, uh, maybe 30 seconds or uh, one minute. When I was a student uh, study, uh, when I read an article, it said that the span of a normal student in Indian scenario is maximum 20 minutes. So span of attention is uh, the time a student can concentrate on a particular lecture or a class is 20 minutes. Now it is varying 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, definitely not more than five minutes because of um, the influence of social media, technology and things like that. We get images which are very fast moving. Therefore, uh, it's difficult to uh, capture the attention of students for a longer period. This is a very, very challenging uh, thing for teachers. So teacher cannot simply follow the whole lecture method. You won't be listening to me if I am uh, closing this PowerPoint and telling the same thing continuously, a kind of a lecture. You are able to look at me because and listen to me because I am, you know, switching from um, visual to my description and I'm giving a chance for you to read. All these things are very, very important. But that is not the point here. I just slightly deviated. Illiterate society, visually illiterate society in the sense that we are not uh, giving attention to what we really see and try to understand, be it climatic change, be it problems in the society, be it suffering, be it uh, anything else, you know, even our uh, administrators, the politicians who are ruling the country, they don't see things. Uh, they have their own policy. They move ahead. They don't care if thousands die on the streets or uh, millions walk from one state to another, another state, 2,000 miles. It doesn't matter for them because they fail to see what is visually around them. So if you are developing a very good sense of visual uh, reception of things that are happening around you, it will be excellent. You will become a knowledgeable person, not only that you'll be a, become a very good human being. So as, a, as students, it is important to develop visual 
the ability to learn things visually. Visual literature, uh, literacy is uh, to you know both read and write visual information, the ability to learn visually, and the ability to think and solve problems in the visual domain. Now, you know, I sometimes look at some of the memes circulated by people in WhatsApp and things like that. I really wonder about the creativity. And, um, you know, they create memes. Um, sometimes you are stunned with the way they think. Um, very good uh, representation or very good um, portrayal of what is happening in reality. So visual uh, literacy or providing something through visual um, is very, very important. So one has to develop that kind of an ability. The nature of learning experience should allow the learner to do something in such a way that a meaningful interaction occurs between him and whatever he sees. There should be an interaction between what you see and uh, your thinking also. So then nature of learning experience should train him or to notice train him or her to notice relevant visual phenomena occurring in his environment, which are essential to him. So it is very, very important. So to uh, keep our eyes open and see things. So also you should be able to, you know, develop visual um, learning. What is visual learning ideas visually, creating ideas visually is that, for example, if you are building a house or you have an idea of building a beautiful house, you should be able to see your house in your mind, how it would look, what will be the appearance, what will be the color of the paint, what are the trees you will be planting around it, isn't it? So if you can see that, that can be brought on paper, then you can create that home the way you dreamt in reality on ground. Now, let us have a discussion about this. Now look at the picture. This is how we develop our literature, liter sorry, visual literacy and develop our thinking. Have you seen this picture before? Any one of you? Take a minute, very quickly think about it and, and write what you think in your mind. What are the words that can come to your mind? What are the thoughts that come to your mind? Be a little, little fast. All is in the head. Okay. We are our own creator. Now, pay particular attention to the legs of that person. Is he walking with these? Or is he finding it difficult? Loaded, yes. Carrying the weight of your own madness. Wow. Ashita, you should see a psychiatrist quickly. Hard work leads to satisfaction. Okay. Right, now, in order to understand this, I'm giving some questions. So those teachers who are listening to me also can, uh, you know, uh, think about it when you plan your class. Read these questions and answer me. Weight of your own thoughts, Dr. Vasha saying yes. Hard work leads to satisfaction, okay. It's mostly about weight of uh, your own thoughts. Do you like this picture? Is it funny or serious? Why do you think it is funny or serious? This is normal thinking actually. If it is funny, you should be able to tell why it is funny. If it is serious, why it is serious. What do you see on the cart? A huge, large head 
with uh, the weight of your own thoughts. Do you understand what is portrayed in the picture? Come on, students. Did you have your breakfast? Your people are young and you should be energetic. And if you are lazy to type, you can switch on the microphone and tell me. Do you understand what is portrayed in the picture? Why do you think this culture is exhibited? Why do you think the head is so big and bulky? Look at the question number, yeah. I think it is serious because most of the time, our thoughts and the thing we overthink about makes it hard to go forward. Very good. Joey Datha, it is a very good interpretation. Okay. That's why the head is very bulky. Now, these are all uh, questions that initiate some sort of discussion and understanding. Let me move to the higher order of thinking skills questions. So I have divided these questions into three parts. Ordinary thinking in order to understand, then higher order thinking leading to more understanding than critical thinking. A man pushing a cart carrying his own head. Uh, life, it, it can be said that uh, we are carrying our own life's burden on our head, isn't it? So life is becoming very difficult because our heads are so big, not in size, you know, you don't see that big, but uh, the thoughts, overloaded thoughts. Now, why do you think the man's head is made so bulky? What do you think the sculpture is trying to communicate through the sculpture? Does the bulky head mean the real size of the head or the heaviness of the thoughts in the head? How do you think the man feels carrying a massive head? Have you ever had such a mass you had? Look at the question, you know, from, you know, always um, any thought process should uh, start from you and move towards the society in understanding your ideas or whatever you see in the society, you should be able to filter it through your thoughts towards you also. So inward thinking and outward thinking as well as uh, it is vice versa also. Sometimes you think inward, sometimes you think outward. That will help us to become better citizens in the country by analyzing and understanding. And man has to carry it throughout his life. Uh, not necessarily. If you understand how to manage your thoughts, you need not carry such a large head. You should be able to process. That is why where critical thinking comes. Now let me move on to the critical thinking questions. Look at this. I started with the seventh question in the previous slide and start with the First critical thinking question. How do you relate the sculpture to a man's life in the modern world? Did your grandfather had such a uh, troubling thoughts? Or your grandmother had such a troubling thoughts? Or as we are living in this modern world with lots of um, technology problems, we have a bigger head than our ancestors. Okay, this is something very important to think. Heavy load of his thoughts, which seem to be very difficult to carry. Yes, Taiba, good answer. Why do you think is sorry? Who do you think is responsible for making the head so massive and heavy? This is another critical quest question. Is it thinking generated by you? Are these thinkings are uh, generated by the things around you? It's a funny sculpture in terms of modern thinking. I think there is a no clarity of thought, just more thoughts, no introspection. Good. The man himself and his surroundings. Okay, both are responsible, equally responsible. I agree to that. Have you ever experienced such a heaviness in your head? Again, coming back to you, yourself. Now look at the last question. Is it important to minimize or control our thinking to live a lighter, happier life? Here you have to make a decision, isn't it? So how I generated questions with general understanding. What is your initial reaction of looking at the picture, whether it is funny or serious, whether it is interesting to look at it, whether it is beautiful or ugly, all those things. 
and we are moving. This is what called as visual learning. You see something and you develop that kind of a thinking and questioning and you develop your thinking. So hope you got an idea, isn't it? What is critical thinking? And uh, this is how, how we interpret visual information. Shall I move on to the next one? Asking questions. Another very, very important part of critical thinking is asking relevant questions. So one should be able to ask questions and uh, uh, the question you ask uh, shows who you are. Um, so questions reveal interest, very interesting questions. Questions reveal gaps and strengthen understanding when you ask questions. Questions improve recall from the memory. You may have some information when you ask yourself questions, you will get the idea. <laughs> questions keep learners engaged. Questions build a foundation for new knowledge. So therefore it is important for teachers to help our students to ask a relevant question, to teach them or uh, to make them learn how to ask relevant questions. This is one of the very, very important strategies one should have in order to develop critical thinking. So these are all, uh, you know, when you are asking questions, it will help you to remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and to create. So these are the um, good outcomes of developing questioning attitude. So nowadays people don't have much uh, toleration for people who are asking questions. This is very highly discouraged uh, in our country. Actually, in a democratic setup, we are uh, supposed to be very bold and we should be allowed to ask questions. But uh, you know, uh, people are very impatient nowadays, asking see if anyone is asking question, he is considered to be an outcast or you know, he is not a person who, you know, he doesn't love the country, he doesn't love his language, he doesn't love his uh, religion. That kind of a blame game is being acted out. These are the benefits. You remember, you understand, you can apply, analyze, evaluate, and create your own ideas. Now look at this picture. Uh, the letters are slightly faded. I can read that. Um, so this is a situation where people are traveling by an aeroplane. And um, this is an announcement uh, by the captain who is flying the plane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are now entering Indian airspace to avoid collision with the statues of unity, integrity, peace, harmony, etc. We'll be flying at an altitude of 50,000 feet. Okay, so normally aeroplanes play between um, the dom domestic aeroplanes as well as international flights. Passenger planes uh, fly at the height of 35 to 40,000 feet. But when they are crossing the Indian sky, they are flying. 50,000 feet and above. Why? They are afraid of crashing onto one of the statues made in the country. So what do you think of this picture? Is this picture as a, this is by a cartoonist called Thomas. I think in this one was drawn immediately after uh, Dr. Ambedkar's uh, statues, statue was installed in, was it installed in Gujarat somewhere? Okay, now look at this. Is it an, yes, thank you. Nadia, thank you, so for confirming it. I was sometimes finding it difficult to recollect the exact information. Okay, blame it on old age, right. So what do you think? Is it a reality? Is it an exaggeration? Is it an exaggerated reality? Read the questions and answer. I'm not going to read the questions. Read the questions and give your interpretation about our answers to the question. Come on, very quickly, two, three people can give me an answer.
Does the picture reveal the irony of the situation? Is serious while the tone is sarcastic. Very good, Aiba. It can be joy. It can be defining our double standards and unwillingness of people to be part of it. Okay. They are just making fun. Good. Yes, it is funny only. Making fun of what is happening in our country. Now I'm moving towards the more critical questions. Cartoon depicts real issues here. Yes, it only took one third of cast of Statue of Unity for ISRO to almost reach the moon. Correct. What about helping farmers? Do you agree or disagree with what is illustrated in the picture? What do you think will be the effect of picture on the general public? Do you believe such depictions will help people understand the reality around them? Such cartoons as students. Is it important to understand the present scenario? Because tomorrow one of you may become a minister, cultural minister, statue minister. So you'll be in charge of building statues all around the country. Will you do that? Or you will think twice before building statues in future. Why is it important? Why am I showing it to you? Because you are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. You are going to handle things at that time. When you are all developed, uh, when you are given um, enough education into critical thinking, when you are trained to think critically, you will be able to analyze the issues and bring out with uh, good solutions for the problems of the country rather than um, spending the wealth of the nation without any purpose. That's the last question. Don't you think the money spent on statues can be used for the uplifting of the poor in the country? Yeah, very good. Yes, these are statues of Pomben show whereas hundreds and Millions of people are suffering in poverty without medical facilities, without electricity, without water, and without basic amenities. So can we plan it better? Then next strategy is looking for the connection between uh, the subjects. So students can be trained, you know. When you look at something, write down the most important thing they, the students you have learned in, on the day when you go home. Um, what it matters to the society. What did you learn today? Or at least before you sleep, lie down and think whether that has got a direct relevance to my life or the life of the people around us, the life of you know, people in your family. All these things are very important. This one, you know, I'll just skip this. Uh, questions for the group A. Now there are 34 people and I can divide the group so A to M, or A to M, you read the group A question, those people whose name starts with A to L, those people whose name start with um, M to Z, Z, you can be one group, you can read the questions uh, I show next. Just read and type the answers, group A. Do you know the name of the organization that handles Indian space research? Already the name is there in the chat box, okay? What do you think is the position of Indian space research in the world? Do you think we need such research for development of the country? Do you have any idea of the amount of money spent on the space mission organized by your country or our country? Does space research undertaken by the country have any direct benefit to the common man? So these are the questions for the group A, just to try to remember the questions. Then we'll have a discussion later. For group B, I'm trying to connect two things. One is ISRO research and space research in the country and the condition of people in the country, especially farmers. Do you know what is what the term election manifesto mean? Have you ever seen, read an election manifesto? Can anyone explain what is an election manifesto in the chat box? Do you think it is essential for political parties to have election manifesto? 
Do you think that the political parties honor their election manifestos after coming to power? Does a common man get benefits if the election manifestos are not implemented? So these are the questions for group B. So I am trying to connect two subjects. This is also very important, connecting between the things which we learn, which, between the things we observe. So what is the election manifesto? No idea? Someone quickly give me an answer. So critical thinking, connecting things is very important. Election manifesto is the promises the parties, political parties make uh, in order to get elected, in order to harness vote from the public. Now look at this cartoon. This is a visual representation of the real scenario in our country. So, your poor man, look at this, you know, the picture. Um, the scientists are trying to, I'm not going to explain, just look at it, then uh, I'll go to the next question, you'll uh, understand it by yourself. I need not explain everything. Now read the questions and connect it with the picture you have seen and the message in it. Just quickly, one or two minutes you can take. Yes, the election manifesto is public declaration of policy and aim. Very good, Yashika. Look at the last question, five. I'm moving on to the next slide. More critical thinking questions. Due to frustration, yes, Taiba. Frustration, yes, very good answer. Look at question number seven. Of course, space research organization is important, but um, doing it in an excess way, India is one of the very, very leading countries in space research. And um, many countries in the world depend on India to launch their rockets. We are highly advanced, we have highly advanced rocket technology, thanks to Dr. Abdul Kalam and Kasturi Rangan and other scientists, and the present scientists who are working in ISRO. At the same time, are we not responsible to care for the common man? That's a question. What do you think are the ways of improving the lives of the common man? You know, give me answer. Just, just keep these uh, questions in your thinking. Now look at the picture again. After this, reading the question, I think you will understand the picture much better with the questions. Okay, I am moving on. Another uh, important thing is, uh, you know, determining the authenticity and accuracy of the information you get. So we are getting time and day and night, we are bombarded with a lot of information. Most of the informations are fake in order to generate emotional uh, 
outbursts among people, misleading them. All these things are happening in the country, not only in our country, even that is happening in America. So all over the world, this is part of the game. Just read the questions, excuse me. These are the questions you should ask as soon as you see a picture or WhatsApp sharing, something which is shared on WhatsApp. So you must check whether it is any political or tones, whether it is political, racial, whether there are any general prejudices. And you shouldn't indulge in these kind of things. Do you find exaggeration in the news picture information? Yeah. Look at the way Prasant Singh Rajput's death was interpreted and uh, it was called a murder. Finally, at the end of the day, they opened a worm of cans and many people are in soup now. They are in the legal tangle. So is it important for the country? Now, there is a lot of difference. So, you know, I am working in a country, it's an Islamic state. And if anybody commits a crime, the crime is reported in the newspaper only once. We get a news, there uh, happened a crime, so and so was arrested and he was given for public prosecution. Then maybe another three months, we get another news in the newspaper, one line, two line news, that um, that particular person who committed the crime is given this punishment. That's it. There is no other discussion, nothing. Crime is punished. But in our country, crime is discussed, discussed, and discussed. And at the end of the day, half of the crimes are more than 80 to 90 percentage of the crimes go unpunished. So continue to discuss, okay? So these are the, our reality. Now look at this picture. Now tell me whether the flamingo egg yolks are pink or not. Very quickly, you must tell me. You shouldn't go to internet and check. Just to look at this. This is a WhatsApp message. Uh, it's a Facebook message I got from one of the contacts. Very quickly, is it pink or not pink? My dear friends, what are you doing? Pink, no. Dr. Vanika, pink, okay. What about others? No, 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 sir. So, how do you know whether it is not pink? Just a wild guess, isn't it pink? Okay. Now you are getting a WhatsApp message like this. What do you do? Do you immediately believe that the flamingo yolks are pink? Because you don't know. So what you should do? You should not blindly believe anything. You should immediately check. You can check on internet today, it is easy. Otherwise you have to go to the college library, search for an encyclopedia and read about flamingos. Then only you can understand, now it is easy. Yeah, ask that person from that wire from you got it. You can, um, you'll search about it. Now you can search about it very quickly and um, tell me, you Google it and tell me. Chalky white, isn't it? Very good. We are in a post-truth world. Whatever is posted becomes the truth, yes. As students, can you believe that? You shouldn't believe that. So, flamingo X yolks are not pink. This is a Photoshop photograph just to circulate it. So, I'll pass these questions because without asking these questions. Uh, now, this read question number uh, 6 to 10 and answer yourself.
Okay, I'm moving on. So next one is basing judgment on evidence from reliable sources. So this is also very important. You have to ask questions, asking, acquiring knowledge, apprising, aggregating, applying, assessing. These are all very important. And um, I think I can share the P PDF document of this presentation with uh, Dr. Anshika and she can share it with you. Later you can, uh, when you have free time, you can go through this because these are very, very important uh, information. Uh, so I have to rush through it because of the time limit. You can uh, have a look at it later and I move on. So look at this, it's also very important basing judgment on evidence from reliable source, marketing techniques. Look at this picture. So what do you think if your university is going natural with banana leaves, here leaves from the trees for small kids, they are asking you to clad yourself on banana leaves, longer ones, depending on your height and weight. Is it possible? Can you go back to the very, very natural way of living? Whether this picture is funny, funny or not? Isn't it? But uh, even though it is very funny, it has a very, very serious message. I'm not against Patanjali, isn't it? So I'm using Patanjali toothpaste every morning. So don't think that I'm against him and don't give my name to him. I'll be in trouble. So he's a great Swamiji and uh, he's more powerful also. So what is the central theme of the picture? Do you think the image marks the claims of Patanjali products? Is it possible to go back to the natural way of living as suggested in the picture? Then you will all look funny, isn't it? Don't you think the advertisement of Patanjali products is only a marketing statute? I mean, I use this uh, cartoon, but all advertisements for that matter. Fair and lovely, 20 days you will become fair like me. You believe it? Do you think the common man will succumb to such manipulations that come with marketing as their soul lane? Of course, all of us, not only common men. I think many of um, your professors are buying fair and lovely and applying it every day. Send it. Do you have enough evidence to prove that the purpose, the proposed products are 100% uh, natural proposed? There is a spelling mistake. I missed a letter there. 100% natural? Okay, very good. There is no issue with natural products, but technologically advancements have made life better and more accessible. So it is not possible to go back. Very good answer, Abhishek Singh. Yeah, we can revert to nature to a certain extent, but not. Do you think returning to 100% age of, which I already asked, okay? So whenever you see an advertisement and claims, you have to authenticate it. Ask, you know, what is the evidence? If you are using a Patanjali product or any other product, are fair and lovely, apply for 10 days and see whether you become white like me. If not, don't buy that after that, okay? So now another one is overcoming confusion. Dr. Anshiga, we are reaching the time. I may need another 10, 15 minutes. Is it okay? No, no problem. You can carry on, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Absolutely. students have no other commitments now, classes or anything. Okay. Right. So overcoming confusion. This is another important strategy one should uh, develop, you know. We are confused every time and we are very poor decision makers. For example, you know, um, you graduate from IIT and your father is a farmer who has not gone to school at all. And when it comes to marriage, an IIT graduate depends on the decision of a father who has not studied up to even fifth class. So again, there is confusion, isn't it? 
So we are most of the time we we leave our uh, major decisions in our life to people who don't understand the, the life, uh, our requirements, our education, our situation, all these things. I just ma gave marriage as an example only. Similarly, uh, you go to work in a Western country and people try to control your life from here. Your father using sentiment, your mother using mother's sentiments, all these things we don't know what is right for us, what is wrong for us, what to choose. These things are uh, uh, offering a lot of uh, stress to us every day. So in order to escape from the stress, one should be able to deal with confusion. Confusion is not only for uh, students, but the confusion is for everyone. At all ages, we get confused. Decision-making, why to settle down. Even if you are buying, nowadays this, this is another problem. Those days, you know, 10, 15 years back when I wanted to buy a laptop, I went and bought an HP laptop without even inquiring. Today, if I want to buy a laptop, my son says one, my nephew says another, my wife says another, and some of my friends tell you, just Google and see, compare and contrast. Oh my God, it takes another three months for me to decide. So again, we are confused. We are not able to come to conclusions and make decisions, okay? So coming out of the confused state of mind is very important to have clarity of thoughts and to make decisions that bring positive results because it is challenging to transact life with a confused mind. You go crazy. People easily make you crazy. So in order to come out of the mind, you should know how to overcome confusion. Now, you can read that, getting through later, you can read that. Then in order to overcome confusion, what you should do? These are the strategies. Have patience, detach yourself and think. Accept where you are, focus on what you know, seek knowledge, be humble and patient, hope for the best. Finally, if you can't solve your confusion, hope for the best. You know, like Americans, what Americans do, when they are about to crash the car, they will simply take off the hands from the steering and say, God, take control, okay? So you know what will be the result, right? Now look at this, this picture. Look at the picture very, very carefully. There are very important details there. Now look at this. Especially look at this, this picture and what the, the grip of the bear, his face. This is a common man, okay seeking the attention of the prime minister, but what does the prime minister do here? So he's pointing towards other non-issues. I mean, for um, a person living in Kanyakumari, what am I to do with uh, Kashmir? Or a person living in Bhopal, when you are, uh, the, the tax you pay is used for uh, a different purpose without helping me, not providing better educational facility for me or for my children. So these are the, you know, people try to confuse us, politicians do, religious heads do, all these things. Don't try to assess my party, okay? So as a teacher, I am apolitical, away from politics. I am using this as just for a classroom purpose and only for academic purpose. So please understand me at the right, uh, perspective and uh, don't try to uh, come to conclusions now about my political lineage or anything. Let us ask the questions. Can you identify the people in the cartoon? What is an economic slowdown? Do you all feel? Is it a severe problem or why? Why do you, what do you understand from the portrayal of a man caught by the bear? It's a, you know, can you escape? A bear catch you? Cannot. So economic problems are such a huge problem. Um, uh, they are so huge. Economic difficulties are so huge that people kill themselves. Each day, if you over the state, if you take the statistics, minimum 100 people are killing themselves. 
not only ordinary people, retired DGPs, CBA officers, they kill themselves. Retired governors, they kill themselves. Okay, maybe there are personal reasons or whatever, right? A person killing himself is a very big crime, not on him. It is a crime on the society in which he is living, if he, the society fails to protect him. Okay, so do you know what is happening in Kashmir? Are you connected with that? Now, in comparison, which is the more significant problem, economic slowdown on Kashmir? You are, you know, the people who are not getting roti on a daily basis. Is it a great problem or terrorism in Kashmir? Is it necessary for all the Indians to care about that and contribute your valuable money you pay through the tax? for protecting one a political interest of one state. Do we think the act of the government is justified? What is the intent of the government according to the cartoon? Diversion, isn't it? So manipulation, they are trying to divert, manipulate. So we should be able to resist these things. So critical thinking helps us to develop that kind of an attitude where you ask questions about it and try to resist such kind of diversions which are being thrust on us day in and day out. So again, um, manipulation. This is another uh, cartoon, the seventh part. The previous one was uh, for uh, overcoming confusion. We are confused. We are uh, given a lot of information. We don't know whether what to believe, what not to believe. And um, you know, sometimes you are asked to prove your own um, uh, dedication or um, your own beliefs. That is very bad for us yeah economy plays a vital role in every aspect of life whether our thoughts choice or relationships objecting very good bad economy leads to more bad results very good analysis this is how one has to understand okay resisting manipulation again it uh, th these manipulation can be that patanjali uh, that particular cartoon i showed that also manipulation is there they are trying to manipulate that there is a greater awareness among people that uh, you know they think that uh, they, if they use natural products they can live longer they can live healthy of course it is correct only but they are trying to market it and exploit that kind of belief that is there in the people manipulation is the act of influencing or controlling someone in a crafty or unscrupulous way Manipulation is a daily affair in our lives. Resisting manipulation is a uphill task because it is a big challenge to identify the manipulations instantly or even quickly. Dr. Robert Dawson claims that resisting everyday manipulation from media, family, friends, work, and relationships are hard. Do you think only political parties manipulate? Sometimes your own father manipulates, your teacher manipulates, you manipulate your teacher to give you more grades. We are all smart in that, okay? Everyone manipulates. So not only, you know, don't think that politicians are the most corrupt in the world. No. If politicians are corrupt in the country, the people of the country are corrupt. We are all corrupt. So that is why we have corrupt politicians. So what is there in the society, that will be re reflected in every walk of life. If you have a corrupt society, you'll have corrupt teachers. If you have a corrupt society, you'll have corrupt policemen. You'll have uh, corrupt doctors. Because society is corrupt, you are ready to offer bribe for your benefits. So these are all not isolated, uh, or these are all not problems for a particular person or particular office. It is common. We as Indians are uh, susceptible to corruption at the fall of a hat. Okay, the promise of relief that manipulation gives often distracts us from seeing the ulterior motives. So promise, they promise many benefits. And you know, all these things are there. Then our past issues, what our past experience, when we are jobless in the past, when somebody is promising you a job, you believe in them, isn't it? So this is how it happens. So our past bad experience is used by other people. Our poverty is used by people. They pay in state of Tamil Nadu. During the election time, people are paid 5,000 rupees and offered drinks for voting. So you are poor, so you take the money and vote for the party, isn't it? So there also, it is manipulation. We fear anticipated rejection and the thought of being wrong. Manipulation works on making us feel righteous with an expectation of approval. We fear the real world consequences of failure and the manipulation work on offering us a guarantee of outcome. 
Now, not only that, you know, uh, like um, in some of the colleges in my state, if you want to get a, a regular job with the government salary, you have to pay 40 lakhs rupees. Because you are you you pay that money and get a job because you are afraid of failure. You think that society, you know, even if you if you don't get a very good job, you don't get good respect. All these things. But if a person has forty lakhs rupees, he can do something and uh, make a, an excellent living. He need not pay that money. Uh, but uh, people go in for manipulation, isn't it? Now look at this cartoon. This was. Um, by Satish Acharya during the time of election, when they brought this idea of 10% reservation to the forward community of the country. Now they are trying to manipulate the forward community and take votes. They are selling railways, they are selling Air India. All the organizations um, the government had in order to offer jobs to the people, they are being sold. That means zero employment possibility. What's the use of having a reservation, isn't it? So that's why this is a look at the banana leaf. He's waiting for food. Now look at the caption. When we return in 2019, we'll have food also. Not only reservation jobs, but we'll offer you food also. Vote for, you know, this is, you know, this is one of the recent political pictures. The same thing is done by every party. It is not only this particular party. This is just an example of this party. Any political party for that matter, they do this, the kind of manipulation. And similarly, institutions manipulate. So many things are there. Religious uh, people manipulate. Uh, so manipulation is part and parcel of our daily life. Now, let me skip the first few questions. Do you think the man is happy with the job reservation offer? Does the man know that the pot, pot is empty? There are no jobs. What is the possible state of mind of the man? Look at the picture and face of the man. He's helpless, isn't it? What he needs is a, he's hungry and he needs food on the table, on the banana leaf now. What will he do with the promise? What is required for him right now, for a hungry man, is somebody feeding him, giving him food right now. But what is happening? He's given promise. That's a false promise. So this is how the society or political scenario moves on. As students, we should be able to understand this. And uh, some of the colleges or universities offer, you know, 100% job placement, advertisement when they admit students. At the end of the fifth year, they are kicked out. So you have got a degree. Then some universities really honor that, but other universities. So manipulation is there anywhere and everywhere. So as students, you have to be careful. Do you think the situation depicted in the picture portrays an attempt to manipulate the water? Do you think the common man will succumb to the manipulation? Of course, he will. Not only common men, even educated people. Now, the problem with the India is the middle class. They are the most manipulated, and they are the most manipulating people on earth. So that's the reason why there are a lot of things happening that are not very uh, comfortable for a common man, comfortable for living in a peaceful, living a peaceful life in our country. Now, extended activity. So this is mostly for teachers, how they can, you know, extend, uh, create activity, discussion, group discussion in order to develop um, um, kind of um, communication. Do you think the cartoon depicts manipulation? You can give the question, have a group discussion, and also ask the students to uh, discuss. Will you vote? without analyzing the promise in the manifesto, even if it is from your own favorite party. Now we are divided, isn't it? I don't have a favorite party. As for well, all these years, I never had a favorite party. Maybe if I say that people may not believe me, or they'll think that something is wrong with me. Yeah, so this is the, the order of the day is that you should be some party. I, I, either you should fight for one party or defend your, your party, something like that. Can you identify false promises and resist manipulation in future? Do you think it is essential to resist manipulation and why? Is it essential to have the ability to identify resist manipulations? Now, when I told it is for the teachers, when you are uh, preparing classes in, um, say in similar lines, even the most shy student, students with anxiety will automatically speak because 
these are the topics which uh, are very familiar to them, isn't it? They see day-to-day -day life, they know what it is. So it is um, easy for them to participate. They become, um, you know, uh, they become less uh, anxious, less shy, and they speak. So let me conclude. Developing strong critical thinking abilities in college students is the need of the hour. It is very, very important to train our college students in critical thinking. And students should be good at CT as they are required to be well-informed decision makers in their personal service as well as professional lives. So you have to make decisions, not only in your personal life, like I mentioned, in order to buy a laptop, if you, you know, continue to discuss for three months with all your friends, what's up here and there, finally you end up doing nothing. So you, in order to make decisions very quickly and implement the decisions, not only in personal life, but also in your jobs scenario everywhere, then you need to be good critical thinkers. Also, students can be systematically trained in CT by language teachers as language is a tool for enhancing one's thinking skills and the expression of thoughts. This is very, very important again for the teachers attending this to understand that it is our responsibility as language teachers to develop critical thinking. So therefore our uh, classroom should be 20, 80 percentage, not 80 percentage of teacher talk, but 20 percentage of teacher talk and 80 percentage of student talk. When students become critical thinkers, they become proficient in communicating their thoughts with clarity. It will also enhance their ability to analyze problems, situations, and to find suitable solutions with ease. So that need to be done. You know, what they are trained in a classroom, they'll be able to easily practice in the society. So the classroom should be brought into the, uh, sorry, society should be brought into the classroom and the classroom should be brought into the society. So this is a kind of mutual arrangement which teachers should aim at um, implementing in their day-to-day -day teaching. When teach students work in pairs or groups, they can align their thinking and have a discussion on the political and social implications of the cartoons and unravel the meaning of the cartoons they are studying, visuals. Now, if I am asked to teach a group of students and develop their communication capabilities, I can go to class without any syllabus, without any book. If you give me a whiteboard and an internet connection and a laptop, that is enough for me. I can develop language skills with any number of students, without textbooks, without anything. Only internet is enough. I can make them speak. I can make them communicate. So that is the kind of confidence I have. That is through hard work and, you know, 15, 20 years of hard work developing various strategies and understanding how students learn language. So it is important for teachers to develop that kind of an attitude and involved in research also, and students also. So you should be able to, in order to develop language, you cannot just uh, simply sleep over it. And um, you have to practice, you have to communicate, you must also participate in the class discussions. While students analyze the visuals, they get a chance to share their knowledge obtained from their real life experiences also. The use of visuals in the class along with developing CT helps students learn to work collaboratively and cooperatively in the learning process. This is another important training students should have because you know, if 20 lecturers are then, uh, they're in a department, 20 people will function as 20 different departments. They will not cooperate, they will not talk to each other, they will not collaborate with each other. What is the reason? Each one is an university, individual university. He has unique or she has unique knowledge. She is superior to everyone or he is superior to everyone. He cannot work with others. Why? Because when they had their university education, they never had a um, chance to work collaboratively with any, anyone are cooperatively with anyone. There was a cutthroat competition, getting half a mark or one percentage extra than the other student was the only priority with which they studied. But today's education, it is not like that. The demand is different. The classroom collab should happen. Any exercise should be collaboratively or cooperatively done. Teaching and learning should uh, take place in a collaborative environment where teacher and students collaborate. Then the students go out in their office scenario and the families also, they learn to collaborate. They will never feel that their ego is much higher than the requirement of their job. So this is something very, very important. Now, thank you very much all participants for listening to me. 
and also i would like to express my gratitude to alok s vadalamudi satish acharya and jiban sis and thomas they are all my facebook contacts and friends uh, i borrowed their cartoons and i thank dr anshiga for uh, inviting me and uh, this is the first time i'm presenting um, in the northern part of the country and uh, thank you very much dr sharma for uh, attending and for your nice words and uh, it is a real pleasure talking to you all thank you very much and these are my references and if you have any questions and uh, observations about my presentations are students allowed to use their microphones unmute them sir yeah they can those who want to speak they can unmute and speak now little bit of noise will be okay i'm finished <laughs> Anybody who would like to ask any question, or Not shall I question. start? Yeah, if you want to appreciate <laughs> my presentation or say where I can improve, go ahead. Because I can learn a so lot. So, sir, the you. pleasure in the all hours I mean, having you was really nice, and I think you know the questions are at times when you understand, when you don't understand, or you are in a you know midway. Like I had certain questions. Um, I mean, before ten minutes, I had certain questions, but in your last slides, you cleared it all. Uh, again, this question I would like to ask is that what is um, you know someone with critical thinking skills capable of doing? Can you just sum it up in short? I mean, uh, what would be the best thing a person can do if he is into critical thinking? To develop critical thinking, or, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. to act on critical thinking. to act on uh, to act on see uh, this is an excellent question but a tricky one also yeah so see act on critical thinking um, somebody asked me whether critical thinking is um, whether uh, uh, people are not um, kind of uh, gifted with critical thinking right from the birth uh, critical thinking actually, of course thinking is uh, a gift we get uh, we got right from the beginning and uh, that is what uh, distinguishes us between um, animals and ourselves our you know ability to think whereas critical thinking is something we need to develop over a period of time by asking questions understanding the scenario and through observation and things like that now do you consciously um, practice critical thinking everywhere of course no this is where is the difference if you become a you know conscious about critical thinking it is like a psychiatrist practicing psychiatry going home and applying the same thing with his wife and children that's a very dangerous uh, um practice so there is a place where critical thinking you have to detach yourself from critical thinking that means you cannot consciously apply critical thinking everywhere it should become part and parcel of your thinking and uh, it should be a kind of guiding factor it should be a kind of skill over a period of time therefore it is not very consciously done it is unconsciously embedded in your thinking and in your action in understanding and um, reacting to the situations that is very very important so therefore in practice critical thinking is not consciously done it is happening automatically because you are trained and you are uh, what shall i say it is a kind of a um, uh, daily affair that is reflected in your thinking in your actions when that happens whatever you talk whatever you do will not falter much so that is how critical thinking works so as students they have to develop consciously but uh, when you go outside the classroom and practice it no no i am applying critical thinking here you cannot have that kind of an attitude so a kind of detached way of applying it otherwise if you go on applying critical thinking anywhere and everywhere finally you will end up nowhere so that will be a problem added to you again you will end up with uh, analyzing everything you will uh, develop a kind of mistrust with people too much questioning is also dangerous so one has to be very cautious in uh, you know uh, handling this critical thinking should be a part and parcel of our daily you know routine
and it should be unconscious. Thank you. And just given that I have a question. Um, yes, please go ahead. Uh, what is the, uh, like, uh, does culture affect uh, critical thinking in a person? Uh, culture doesn't uh, affect critical thinking. Actually, uh, see, if you look at the Indian culture, Indian culture is basically based on a lot of critical thinking. But over a period of time, uh, we were blocked from thinking and expressing ourselves. It has happened through uh, various ways. Uh, one is, um, uh, you know, giving more importance to caste seg segregations, caste and class, uh, the difference. Then the different religions, they play a vital role in um, blocking the critical thinking. Then our uh, political system, then our educational system. So how many of us as teachers allow students to question us? How many of us, if a student is coming and telling me in my class, teacher, you are boring today, why don't you stop and uh, allow us to have some chit chat in our class? Or if a student is telling teacher, you haven't prepared for the class, why don't you leave us free? We will go to the library and learn. Will you allow that? So you see it as a descent, isn't it? So therefore, uh, all the systems, all the um, organizations we developed um, in our country block this. So therefore, um, at one point of time, uh, we lost the ability to naturally acquire this um, ability because all the, for example, Ramayana, Mahabharata, all these uh, places, uh, you know, even Bhagavad Gita, all of our uh, classics, you know, our um, classics, our religious books, or whatever it is, you know, I have to use the correct kind of terminology today. So these books uh, are based on questioning, isn't it? Deep critical questioning. Questioning uh, on different situations. You have your kin on your opposite side. Will you shoot an arrow? Why should you shoot that arrow? Isn't it? So Indians never had any problem with critical thinking. But over a time when we developed modern education, modern religion, modern way of thinking, and focusing more on caste uh, or uh, uh, social segregations, uh, these things uh, take a back seat. Back seat. So therefore, it is important to again bring it back to the forefront and develop, uh, go back to the olden days, I would say. We never had any problem with the thinking. And we are going towards the Western way of thinking because everyone, you know, ask a uh, question, who is, the uh, who is the greatest thinker on the world, in the world? Immediately you'll say Socrates. What about all our uh, great poets? So therefore, it is important to bring back bring to the forefront uh, the thinking um, or the, uh, the philosophies of thinking we had in our classics and uh, all our uh, uh, books that are embedded in our culture. It is very important to bring it back so that uh, critical thinking will become a kind of natural um, thing that our students, our children get. In, through their education. But it is not easy. You know, you know, as administrators, we know how difficult it is even to change one page from a book, our syllabus, all these things, you know, everything is politicized, or, uh, you know, met with resistance. So we have, we have learned more to resist than critically think and analyze. So we are into that kind of a, a social system where resistance, uh, we think that resisting anything and everything is uh, a way of life, not analyzing. Any other questions? Now, if you have I any disagreement, you can come out with that and uh, you can analyze, no problem. I'm <laughs> receptive to any ideas. I open think they've understood all. <laughs> no, okay. yeah. Yeah, they will be a little bit difficult questions? to, you know, you know, they will be shy and uh, they are not trained to, you know, interact in online and things like that, you know. So it will take some time for them. Hope uh, they enjoyed the presentation and, uh, you know, that is very important it for me. Excellent. Yeah, you know, you know, learning is second. 
that one hour or one and a half hours, 19 minutes, uh, 90 minutes they spent with me. Um, it, it should be a happy time, you know, saying something different and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I think and now then, there are no more questions here, sir. I think okay. they've understood it all. <laughs> so, thank you, uh, thank you so much, Shall sir, on behalf of Dagran Lake City University. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out time from your busy schedule and speaking out to our students and sharing your thoughts on how to develop the skill. So thanks again, sir, for the memorable session. And we truly appreciate mentors like you who are willing to give your time and talent to enrich the lives of our young people. Thank you so much, sir. We hope Thank to see you, you again. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Will, okay, sir. Yeah. Shall okay, I log sir. out? Bye bye. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bye. Sir. Wish bye. You all Thank the best so in your life. Yeah. <laughs> wish you all the best in your life. Be happy and be hardworking and be successful. God bless you all.